Hello and welcome to a first look at Linux Mint 10's release candidate. I have to give a big thanks to Hexer18 who mentioned in the IRC channel that this had been released. I was at work, hadn't been paying much attention, and look, it's an RC, that's pretty awesome. I kind of expected a beta, I guess, I don't know. But let's just take a look at the new features and then we'll show you a live demonstration. They've updated their welcome screen. They've, in addition, moved some things around so that you only have one version of Linux Mint now. You don't have to worry whether or not it comes with codecs on the disk. You have the option here to just click to install them and to upgrade to the DVD edition which will give you a ton more software pre-installed. In addition, they've made a bunch of changes to their menu. They've highlighted the newly installed applications, sort of a Windows-esque feature. I know a lot of people will enjoy that, though. They've added the ability to find and install new applications from the menu, so you might not even have to use the software manager anymore. They've integrated search engines into this bar. Honestly, the work that they're doing with the slab menu, I am very, very impressed. I want to see it in action, though, so we'll come back to that. They've added the ability to use the GTK bookmarks in this menu, which is something that I've been missing for a while now and to use GTK theming on the menu, so that's pretty awesome. In addition, they've added categories to the software manager. They've added the ability to ignore updates on the update manager, so if you don't want to keep updating a package, rather than blacklisting it or something, you can just right-click and say ignore updates. And they've done a few various and sundry other things, including a whole new look and feel that has been significantly changed. I I'm going to have to look to see what it actually looks like for me, what I think of it. But let's go ahead and just take a look at the distro running in VirtualBox. So here we go, this is the out of the box default look and feel of Linux Mint 10.10. .10. .10. So let's just go one by one through the features that were mentioned and we'll see what we think of it. Now one thing that I should mention, the welcome screen, I don't see it. Maybe I've missed it, but it just didn't come up by default. My guess would be that has to do with running from the live disk. I'll go ahead and install it later and then I will update and let you know what happens with that. By the way, after installation, this is what comes up by default. Uh, it did not have this background, I very quickly changed it. But this is the, the welcome screen that is brand new. You'll notice it's supposed to have two items, one to install the codex for you and one to upgrade to the DVD edition. I'm guessing that the version that I've got has those codex pre-installed, so I'm not going to worry about it. But for now, let's go ahead and move to the menu. One thing that will jump out is this new theme, the brushed metal with a little bit of a lighter green. Uh, very interesting to look at, almost Mac-esque, but I don't necessarily want to say that. Uh, so basically, highlighting newly installed applications, we'll have to install something for that to actually show up. So that leads us to the second point, searching for and installing new applications through the menu. Let's just say GTK Record My Desktop. And there we go, look what just popped up, install package GTK Record My Desktop. You've also got the ability to search your computer, to look it up in a dictionary, search Wikipedia, and search Google. That's pretty awesome. In addition, you'll see here, this is the extra part, the search engines. You can search Google, all of these different things. Very cool. But let's just go ahead and install Record My Desktop. There we go, we're installing it. All right, and very quickly, very easily, that has been installed and applied. So if I go back to the menu, and we should just be able to go look for it in sound and video. Oh look, Desktop Recorder, it's highlighted. Not 100% a fan of that, because it actually makes it a little bit difficult to read the text. Although that brings us to the next point, which is editing the menu. Let's go ahead and look at the themes and see what we can do. Let's go to Preferences. Let's go to Theme. And now we can actually tell it to use custom colors. So now if I wanted to... Yeah, it didn't theme it quite as much as I expected it would. It did the blue colors here, and that's really about it. Um... I guess I expected more when they said that you could theme the menu. Make the menu look different than the rest of the desktop. Uh, maybe we'll just do that. Oh, there we go. Sorry about that, guys. This is my first time at it, so I wanted to see what would happen. Okay, we've done that. We'll hit close. And now the menu looks a little bit different. Okay. That's very, very interesting. It's uh, one of the things that I've been kind of looking for all this time is the ability to make changes to the menu and, and have it actually look a little different from the default. And the look and feel doesn't change all that much whenever I change to a different theme, but it, it definitely does appear to be doing something. Let's go to Redmond. I think that's a much different one. I don't know. I guess I expected the background to change significantly, but it's just going to sort of a flat white. Again, I'll check to see what happens whenever I install it natively on the, on the virtual machine and see what happens. 
but uh, that's that's pretty interesting. So desktop theme, we're back to this. In addition, it mentions that it has GTK bookmarks. So if I were to, for example, make a bookmark to a menu, let's just say if I create a new folder, we'll call this test, and then we'll click it, we'll drag it over here. There we go, we've got a link to test. Now if I come up here, it shouldn't show up by default, nope. But if I go back into the menu preferences again, and go over to places, I can say show GTK bookmarks. Now when I come back over here, there we go, we've got a bunch of new things. However, that makes the menu extraordinarily huge. Uh, don't know if that's a good thing or not. Let me know what you guys think about that. Okay, moving right along, the software manager. I'm not sure how useful that's gonna be at this point now that the menu has gotten so awesome. But we've got all these categories just like we did before. Uh, let's just see what happens if I go into one. Yep, that's a category. What if we go into internet? That's the one they showed in the screenshot. We have subcategories now. That's what's what's different, okay. If I go into office, nothing. Let's just see if there's any any other categorization. I mean, that, that was one of the main features that they said they offered, and it doesn't appear to actually be offering any. There we go. A couple of the categories do have subcategories, so that's pretty interesting. 3D, you can go in and get 3D applications, drawing, photography, publishing. What's under publishing? Good stuff there. And viewers, um, graphics, good stuff. Games, they have different game categories. A little bit odd there, I'm guessing it has to do with the fact that I'm on a small screen resolution. Maybe if I were on a larger one it would, yeah, like that, it would put them all on one line. So that's interesting. Uh, and education, maybe, nope. So only a couple of the categories, actually these three in particular, have uh, any subcategories to them so far. They may be categorizing more things as time goes on. And now we're looking at the update manager. I just wanted to see what would happen if I went ahead and just, oh, let's right click one and say ignore updates for this package. There we go. It's going to search through the package information again, and that one will probably be ignored. Yeah, you see it's no longer there. So hopefully for the future that would keep it from installing. I'm curious if there's a way to tell it to install after you've told it not to. Ignored packages. There we go. So if you have one that you accidentally ignore and you want to unignore it, you can just go in and remove it. Again, this is my first time looking at it. I just wanted to give you guys the first look at the new look and feel, the new applications, the changes to the menus, things like that. And the final thing to actually look at, as far as I can tell, is the new theme. New theme, new wallpapers, new things of that nature. You'll notice we've got some new icons. It's a more flat look and feel. It's getting away from the really dark look and feel that they've been on for a while. The brushed metal, a lot of people are going to like that. I'm me mixed opinion on it. Let me know what you guys think of it, though. The new default wallpaper, I'm I'm honestly going to say I'm a huge fan so far. I, I'm a big fan of the color, I'm a big fan of the artwork on it, so huge fan there. Let's look at the other ones that come pre-installed here. There we go, we've got a couple of different interesting ones. There are actually a couple of different plays on that same wallpaper that we had originally. Those two are the same, I'm guessing maybe one scalable. Interesting. Yep, there's some very cool new wallpapers there. Ooh, that one, that one's pretty awesome too, if you hadn't seen that one before. That, that actually kind of reminds me of the game Gears of War, if you've played it. And this one, eh, it's just mixed. Let's see what else we've got. That's one of the things that I really, I, I give Linux Mint some props for. They always include a ton of wallpapers out of the box. So let's see. And the grand majority of them are just Linux Mint specific, you know, you you are using Linux Mint, be proud of it. So, there we go. So, honestly, a great selection of default wallpapers. I'm probably going to stick to this one, <laughs> just because that's that's pretty epic. Or maybe even the original one. The, the This one sticks out a little more for me, though. I like it a lot. And, of course, the, the Metacity theme, the Metacity theme, whatever you want to call it. It's very dark in the pane, it's very light and kind of uh, flat feeling. I don't know, there, there's a lot of new themes that co kind of correspond to that, uh, where everything sort of feels like they mesh well together. I like that. Let's see if we've got any other included themes by default. We've got Felicia, Mint, Cassandra, a bunch of them there. But Shiki is not there, that's kind of odd. I, I guess I figured they would include their previous theme for the people that wanted it. But either way, it is definitely very interesting. Uh, I, I hope you guys try it out, give it a look and see what you think of it. Given that it's a release candidate, the final version should be out sometime very soon. I'm probably going to go ahead and try this out on my laptop, replacing Ubuntu 10.10 that's already there. But let me know what you guys think of it in the comment section below. That's all for now, thank you for watching and I will see you next time.